about six years ago, uh, in a heavy rainstorm, if you look at the picture that Kara has up there, you'll see some pine trees along this basin. I was standing among those pine trees talking to Jim Caldwell Rattus, our engineering firm, and I said to Jim, this basin, I don't understand what's it supposed to be doing because it held no water at the time. The same size pipes that were coming in the basin were the same size coming out of the basin, and there were concrete channels in the bottom to allow that water to flow that way, and it held absolutely nothing. So he said, well, Dennis, that's the way they were done back then. That was pretty frustrating. So when it came to uh, our latest MS4 permit that we received in 2019, we realized that we had to come up with projects. And like many municipalities, boroughs, and so forth, coming up with projects to do in your MS4 area, which is generally your developed areas, can be a challenge. Well, at the same time that this basin came to my mind, we found out that the property directly connected to this basin was up for development. That encompassed 7.3 acres, MK Builders. So I approached BMC, who uh, owned the property where this basin was located, and I also talked to MK Builders, who had to do stormwater for their development. Along with the township, we all three partnered, and we came up with uh, our with Ratu's help, our engineering firms, and Kara's in particular, we were able to submit for a grant of $142,000 to help ret retrofit this basin, as well as include in it and enlarge it to handle the MK development stormwater as well, and to get the basin to do the job it should do. Mm -hmm. And it's been a win-win and a wonderful partnership. Uh, one of the things that's important for everyone to realize that when you're going to do a project like this, not only do you need to be part of the solution of doing the project and to help with funding it, but also you need to be aware that down the road you need to be a partner on maintaining it. So not only are, is the township involved in getting it done, getting the funding for it, but we'll be a partner with the other two property owners at maintaining it in the future. Because any basin, even though it's just sitting there, is going to need you know, cleaning out and so forth in the future. The other interesting part was uh, what you see on that picture behind you is Route 30. On the north side of Route 30, there's approximately 100 acres that also flows this direction and goes in a small stream, as we saw on the other side of the pine trees there. As part of this project and MK's uh, retrofit to this basin to include their stormwater, we also ended up cleaning out that stream, which benefited everyone on the north side of the highway. I actually had Keystone Church approach me and thank us for improving the conditions they had on their side because the water wasn't getting away and under Route 30 as well as it should have. So the whole thing was a win-win for a number of people. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. Uh, I can't thank our engineering firm or twos enough because, you know, they not only helped us with the funding, but they also helped us or helped us secure that funding. They also helped us through the inspections as the project went along to make sure everything was working the way and being installed the way it was intended to be. And I had MK Builders, after it was all done, st sitting up in their office. They called me on the phone. The owner called me just to let me know. It was a tremendous rainstorm we had one day. And he wanted me to know that that basin was working better than he ever anticipated it would. And that's good to know that not only you're putting this effort in, but you're having a su su success with it. Mm -hmm. Because these projects are costly. They're a bit time-consuming. And it, with this particular one, when you saw some of the pictures earlier, when you're dealing with current stormwater coming in and you have to work on the bottom of a basin with stormwater to deal with, it can be a real challenge. But we got through it. We had to reseed, I think, a second time, but that wasn't too bad. But basically, there's about, overall, 136 acres of water that drains towards this basin. And it turned out to be a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I thank all those involved. Yeah, so I will go through the nitty-gritty of the project itself and talk a little bit about um, Paradise Township and their pollutant control requirements. Um, Paradise Township, if you've ever been to Lancaster County, um, traveling Route 30, you'll go through the top portion of the township. And so the urbanized area is really centered on Route 30 and um, the existing Amtrak tracks that go through I'm going to say the northeast, north portion of the um, township. And so 18% of the township is in the urban area. 
and 17% of the urban area is impervious area. It's, a, it's just a lot of commercial industrial development as, long, as well as the Amtrak tracks. And then there's just little pockets of urban area in the southern end on the um, suburbs of Strasburg. So the township really had a limited area in which to look for uh, stormwater projects. And um, population's only 5,000, so it, it's a very small rural municipality. Many of the areas not in the urban area are um, plain sect farms. So, um, and you can see all of the existing surface streams are all impaired, they're all red streams, all part of the Peckway Creek watershed, which forms the um, northern boundary. And so this is just an, another view of the urbanized area. And then the impairments are all from nutrient siltation and organic enrichment, low dissolved oxygen. So um, fortunately, the timing of the pollutant reduction plan and the timing of the uh, BMP grant from DEP and the recognition that this basin was failing, it was like perfect timing because the township could get started on at least um, working with the partners and pursuing funding as they were developing the pollutant reduction plan. So that was another benefit. As far as their pollutant reduction requirements, so their existing pollutant load is 343,000, almost 344,000 pounds a year of sediment. And so the required reduction is the 10%, which is 34,391 pounds per year. And in their pollutant reduction plan to achieve these reductions, um, the first BMP was this basin retrofit. Then they identified two riparian buffers in their community park up in this area and then along a section of impaired stream which one side of the stream was in the urban area and the other side was outside the urbanized area uh, and then they still needed a little bit extra reduction so they identified a potential uh, basin project for an, an another existing um, industrial development a very large basin that had a very large uh, drainage area which would provide significant um, sediment reductions as well um, zooming in on the project site you can see the existing basin is this little triangle area adjacent to and south of route 30 um, the drainage area to this basin is almost 60 acres and half of it is impervious area. You can see this entire um, industrial development just goes straight into this basin. The um, larger drainage area that Dennis mentioned is coming from the north. And then there's like a intermittent stream that flows through this adjacent property. So this basin discharges into that. And that was part of the improvements um, with this project. But ideally, it was very fortunate that this basin needed retrofitting and it had so much impervious area that the um, sediment reductions were significant. So the existing sediment load to that basin was 51,000 pounds. So with a dry extended basin, you get a 60% reduction. So, you know, achieving 30,000 pounds a year from this one project was almost enough to get them to meet their PRP. They needed um, almost 5,000 more pounds. And like Dennis said, the reason this um, basin was underperforming was it was really designed in the, I guess, early 80s when the stormwater regulations first came out for municipalities. And so the pipes going into the basin were the same size as the two outlet pipes. So. For small, most small streams, there was no there was no detaining in this basin. It was really designed for significant storm events just to reduce the potential for flooding. And over time, you can see there was sinkhole development. So not only was water just going through the basin, it was now also going directly into um, underground um, groundwater supplies which we know is um, not ideal as well for water quality. Um, so we submitted the grant in March 2017, 
Uh, they were notified in August, which was great because it was right before the pollutant reduction plan was to be submitted. And then the project was completed in 2019. So that's about a two year process from the time of being notified of the grant and completing the project. And just some great photos of the existing conditions. Um, there was actually a low, a concrete low flow channel, um, which is great when you think about water quality because all of the, you know, polluted stormwater runoff from this large impervious area is just directly um, channeled to the outflow. So the fact that it's running along a concrete channel gives no um, water quality benefits at all. It is just a straight shot into the small intermittent stream on the other side of the um, the basin berm. And, you know, these sinkholes were just um, getting bigger and bigger over time. And eventually, um, if this basin had not been retrofitted, I think eventually the, the property owner would have had to go in and remediate at their own cost some of these sinkholes. So, you know, obviously we um, we took advantage of working with the adjacent property owner to um, expand the basin onto their property. They had significant challenges because of that stream that kind of bisects their property. The property line did really follow the existing um, evergreen trees. So um, probably half of those trees had to be removed to extend the basin onto that property. Um, the property owner of the, um, where the basin is, is BMC East. They make building supplies, roof trusses. Um, I don't know what else they make. <laughs> um, m &K Partners, they were developing this project site and of course the township. And so here is just, um, the project design to retrofit into an extended basin, we put a sediment four bay at the incoming pipe from BMC East. This is the original bottom of the basin. The um, sinkholes would be remediated. A clay, clay liner would be installed um, to prevent further sinkhole formation and then topsoil, six inch layer of topsoil in this main part of the basin. The extended portion of the basin, which goes into MNK Builder site, also acted as a sediment four bay, which collected water from, I would say, the south side of um, BMC East property, as well as a pipe from MNK Builders. So um, stormwater discharge from those areas are going into this four bay which was um, constructed with 18 inches of amended soil as well as an under drain. So um, during small storms, all of the stormwater is going to infiltrate through that amended soil and be filtered before it then discharges into the main part of the basin and then eventually all out via outlet structure and then into this um, little stream. It's it is classified as a stream, but it doesn't have water all of the time, I don't think. It's kind of intermittent, so it really depends on the amount of rain we get every year. I'm sure there are times throughout the spring and early, late winter when snow is melting that there's continual flow through that. But it's interesting because the, the design, it, it the stormwater is coming from MNK builders going into the four bay, so it kind of does a little circular loop on its travels um, into the basin and then out of the basin. And MNK builders really had to build a pretty high retaining wall along the south side of the basin just to make sure they had um, room to put a building up there and just as part of their development. So those are the construction um, facilities of the new basin. And this is just more of the whole basin in context with the property. And I know the photograph is the small stream where the, this is the basin outlet pipe, the basin berm. So this whole kind of stream was regraded and seeded to accommodate the, the flows that were coming from upstream.
But, you know, definitely MNK builders, they were really appreciated the opportunity to um, be involved in this basin project because they were able to um, utilize the basin for um, water quality or for rate control. And, you know, then with the basin, they don't have to worry about um, wasting space with uh, side yard setbacks or anything. So they were, you know, they were really able to use the entire space between the two properties. And that helped them with um, their land development to have um, adequate parking and to meet all the requirements of the township's um, SALDO ordinance. So construction started. We, um, this project was publicly bid and we had four contractors bid on the project. The low bid was $264,935. And these, um, the bidding um, happened in October of 2018. So these are 2018 prices. Um, the high bid was $598,271. So that is a difference of like $220,000 for a single project. So it's amazing for, it's amazing to see the wide range of um, bids on a project. So when you're looking at the municipality and, you know, the people having to pay for this, it's just always amazes me the range. So we got a good deal, we think, with 264. The other two were 338,000 and 383,000. And the contractor was local to Lancaster. So I think that helped with the cost as well. But involved in it was the sinkhole remediation, doing all the grading, removing that low flow channel, um, removing the existing outlet structure, and then all of the riprap aprons and the seating and the mulching. And I have a slide that kind of shows the breakdown of how the uh, the cost of the project was paid for by the partners. Um, these are just additional construction photos of, you know, regrading the four bays. You see the, the under drains in the sediment four bay two, the rock lined emergency spillway, the riprap aprons, um, and the nice green of the existing bank. So um, great pictures. And then once again, the water quality benefits are you know pretty significant for the township. They almost were able to achieve their entire pollutant reductions from this one project. So um, I'm going to say, you know, we had the bid of 264,935. So that's the, um, that was really the cost of the project approximately. The grant was 142,000. I would say M&K Builders, the developer, they contributed, what did you think, Dennis, about 70,000. Um, oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Still on mute. Um, go up to the top right. You should see a microphone. Click on that. <laughs> Maybe one of the um, organizers can unmute you. There, 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 there. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I thought it was around seventy thousand that they uh, committed to it. Okay. But so, for them to for them to have done an on-site project of their own to handle their own stormwater, they'd have easily spent that much or more. Right. And like and, you said, Kara, it gave them the capability of utilizing more of their land area for mm -hmm. development. Right. And you know, so when you and then the township paid for the the remainder of the cost. But when you look at it as a cost per pound of sediment reduction. You know, totally the, the cost of the project would have been $8 a pound for the sediment reductions that you get. And because the township had the grant and the developer contributed um, the money, it really worked out to $1.60 a pound for sediment. So that's a really good bargain for Paradise Township to, to pay that $50,000 to get that much sediment reduction. Really great, great opportunity and 
um, benefit for their community. And then the operation and maintenance agreement, it was three way. So each of the private landowners are responsible to maintain the portion of the basin that's on their own property. And then the township's authorized to conduct inspections. And, you know, right now we've had last year was like the first growing season. And so the basin, um, parts of the basin were mowed. Um, the area with the amended soils ha has been seeded with an earnest mix. So that will, that can grow up a little bit more during the growing season, but it's really just now um, making sure it's vegetated and um, making sure all of the under drains are functioning, the riprap apron is clean and the outlet structure is um, not clogged. And so um, it's such a highly visible area that it's easy to do some quick visual inspections driving by after a storm to make sure um, things are functioning as needed. And then this was a this is a picture. Actually, it's it's working. There's actually water um, being detained. Um, it is designed the dry extended basin is designed to detain water for up to three days. And so you can see there's this is the sediment for bay two. So water is in there. It's infiltrating into the ground. And then this is the main part of the basin. So it's working <laughs> so far. And that's I'm going to go back. And that's um, the information that we have. There's time for questions if anybody has any. Um, the, yes. Um, yeah, I will say the one thing, there's no BMC C East, the actual landowner, did, was not required to contribute any money to the project because of the grant and because of the partnership with uh, M&K Builders. And actually, they probably save money in the long run because they would have been responsible to remediate the sinkholes and maybe do something with that low flow channel that was deteriorating. Very good. Uh, well, what a great project. Uh, public, private, all the way from property ownership to funding. That's that's a great example. We do have about 30 some odd attendees in this session. I'm wondering if the chat box is working because I'm not seeing anything typed in the chat box except from us presenters who have special status in this Teams program. So if you do have any questions, uh, please do type them in the chat box. In the meantime, I might I might ask a few myself until we get some. Uh, Excuse oh, go me. ahead. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, there is no chat box um, icon showing. It didn't show up since the beginning. So uh, I didn't know whether or not you unmute to ask a question or you have a way of turning the chat box on. Um, Very yeah, we it's just, just not working. Okay. Yeah, the icon disappeared when we came into this room. Okay. Um, Sophie, Sophie, do you have the ability for people to unmute themselves and ask a question? Okay, so if you are not speaking, please do mute your microphone uh, <laughs> to save all of us some, some embarrassment, some potential embarrassment. Uh, but if you do have a question now, go up to the top and unmute your microphone and fire away. Yeah, I had, I still had a question nonetheless, and it's simple. I just wanted to know, since this was an existing basin, this was in the urbanized area, right? Actually, actually, the basin was not in the urbanized area. It's kind of crazy because... So we had to add, we added the area to the urbanized area so that this project would count. Okay, that was my, that was my question, because typically an existing basin and outside the urbanized area wouldn't technically count. Right. Yeah, so. because technically we felt, well, it was such a good opportunity and there was so much impervious area getting into the basin that in reality it is part of the urbanized area but we did add we add, we had to increase our existing load to do this as a project yeah so we if, so even if it's partially in the urbanized area it counts 100 percent towards your ms4 requirement 
Uh, yes, and now the last MS4 FAC allowed um, projects outside the urbanized area if it's within a mile. Oh, okay. Um, and in the same watershed, you know, that the right. MS4 is draining too. So. Okay, see, so rules are always changing. <laughs> That's the, it's always trying to hit the target. All right, That's right. thank you. Sure. <laughs> Very good. Other questions from attendees? Unmute your mic and go right ahead. Um, I will say that if no one has questions, the township is working with another um, private landowner um, who was expanding their uh, trucking company with additional parking and so they had to because of the stormwater ordinance um, upgrade their existing dry detention basin which was similar to this one so the township was able to get um, a grant a local grant from Lancaster County to retrofit an existing swale that was conveying water directly into the basin and the swale was concrete lined channel and the drainage area to that was 140 acres. And so that existing basin was designed to kind of hold a large upstream drainage area. And so the township was able to retrofit that swale. They have to finish a uh, final seeding and grading in this, this spring, but that, that provides them enough credits to, to put them in the, the green for a little bit we'll finish up this permit and then probably have extra for the next permit round very good i i know this is brand new and you probably haven't had a chance to do this yet but i was just wondering about uh impacts to downstream water quality i don't know if you guys did any stream monitoring downstream before and after or had either visibly or or, or measured any sediment buildup in the bottom of the basin since construction was complete? I can answer that on one note. Uh, again, the owner of MK Builders told me he is amazed at the fact that now the water, when it leaves his property and flows through his property, he sees clean water instead of muddy water. So visibly, it has made a difference, definitely. Excellent. Uh, what about, uh, I think you mentioned some uh, upstream construction, uh, maybe a development project, seven acres or so. Uh, did you guys require them to take extra precautions with their usual erosion and sediment controls during construction if it started yet to uh, reserve capacity downstream in the basin? Well, actually, the 7.3 acres was the MK development. Oh, okay, okay. And that site's nearly completely, they're, they're doing their last project now. So basically, stormwater has been totally handled because of the retrofit to the basin for that 7.3 acres. It's worked out great. 